Okay, perfect. Uh, and I can take control, so let me try. Okay, I'll give you control, just because you are yeah. a friend of mine. <laughs> of course. Now that I have control, I'm not sure what to do because uh, I can't do anything. <laughs> so maybe just uh, go well, to the I will next... be your uh, demo monkey. Just let me know what to do and I will do it. So, okay, next yeah, slide. Just, yeah, just uh, so a, a little introduction uh, about myself. I'm a, SQL, uh, I'm a SQL guy. I'm a PM uh, in the Azure SQL team. And uh, lately we just released something that I think it can be very, very interesting for you. It's called Data API Builder. That's what I'm going to, to show with the help of Paolo. And um, so let's just move to the next slide. Yeah, and I'm Paolo. Uh, I'm a solution architect. I work in a company of my own, uh, and you can find all of the info here, but let's focus on the demo. So yeah. let me move on. Yeah, David, go. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's what we're going to build, right? The, the idea is that we want to build a to-do application or at least integrate the to-do uh, list in an existing application. And to do that, you probably need to have a table and then probably you need to expose some REST API to be able to connect with uh, the SharePoint uh, uh, framework that, that you have um, at your end. And, uh, and now today you can do it without writing code, basically, because uh, we just released the last week uh, a tool called uh, Data API Builder for Azure Database. That's a full name, but you know, names are maybe uh, not exactly our strong side. So Data API Builder is uh, is something that allows, it's open source, it's a, it's an application that you can download and run offline, or even of course use on Azure, that will take your existing database or new database if you want to start fresh, uh, specify a table, and we automatically create a REST and even a GraphQL endpoint. That's what I'm going to do uh, with Paolo. So I will be taking a table, exposing it using a DAB, and then Paolo will consume it uh, into a nice application, much nicer than the one that I can build myself. This is how the API Builder, uh, uh, basically the very high level architecture, and you have the link there if you want to go and, and, and see the source code, it's available, you can download it. Uh, and uh, basically what we do is we just ask you to provide a configuration file because we want to be super transparent and, uh, uh, and, and uh, absolutely non-intrusive in the database. So we don't touch database at all, we just uh, use it. Uh, but of course, we need, for example, to understand uh, what is the URL you want to use to expose some table, what tables or storage procedure or views you want to expose. And so we just use a configuration file. Then Data API Builder starts, uh, read the configuration file, uh, read the, the metadata, which is basically the relational schema from uh, Azure SQL in our case, but we also support uh, Postgres, MySQL, and Cosmos DB. For Cosmos DB, you need to provide a GraphQL schema because uh, we need a schema. Um, and then uh, once we have all this information, uh, we just expose uh, the rest and the GraphQL schema. Now, this is this is going to be, you know, kind of obvious. Uh, you say, okay, that's easy, you know, rest and GraphQL. Well, but what is what was not easy, and I think that adds a lot of value, is that we also support uh, security. So we also allow you to specify not only which REST endpoint you want to make available, but within the REST endpoint uh, also which rows uh, of data will be available to someone. So we also implemented something we call policies, which by all means are uh, row level access uh, uh, securities. Um, and, and that is something I will show you. And uh, let's go to the next slide, and then I think we can go to the demo. Yeah, this is exactly how you install it. So if you don't uh, care about the open source part in the sense that you don't want to develop with it or at least uh, contribute to the development, uh, you just do .NET tool install and then uh, it will be installed on your machine and it's a CLI application. And then once you um, once you have installed it on your machine, the first thing you have to do is dub init that will initialize the configuration file and then dub add to add whatever you want to add as a, um, to the configuration file and then dub start. So three command and you're done. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. Um, Something else I wanted to highlight uh, is that, uh, of course, this is also hosted in Azure. So if you want to self-host in Azure, uh, and that's what I'm going to do, it's super easy. You just run it in a container uh, and it's done. If you don't even want to take care of uh, hosting, you can use uh, static apps to basically have a full stack uh, uh, kind of environment uh, at your end in just a few lines of code, because we also integrated uh, with static apps. So if you're familiar with uh, SWA, the static app CLI, it's all integrated. So you just have one tool to do everything from front end, back end database, which is pretty nice in my opinion. Okay, let's go to the demo. Uh, let me share my screen. Here we go. So here I have a very 
simple table, right? A to-do table. And well, we have the ID, the title completed, and the, that's the important part. Now I, I kept everything single, <coughs> simple, but basically owner says, uh, who is the owner of a to-do item? Public means is uh, has been created by an anonymous user, uh, and therefore anyone can see it. Uh, and if you have an ID, that's belong to the ID of the user who created it. Uh, and of course, I can only see my own stuff. Paolo can only see his own to do. And of course, you know, it goes like that. So that's the table I want to expose. What I uh, I need to do is first of all dub init, and I already done it. And what you get once you do dub init is just this configuration file here which basically says what is the connection string and the database uh, you want to connect to, in runtime information like do you want to have REST enabled, do you want to have GraphQL enabled, uh, and, and this is the important part for, for you for SharePointing, for SharePoint uh, usage. Um, the provider that you want to use to authenticate, in our case will be Azure Active Directory, and this is uh, 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 Paolo's tenant uh, in uh, an Azure Active Directory configuration, and then and then aside the runtime configuration, you need to specify which entities need to be exposed. In this case, I am exposing something I will call to do uh, that is based on the table, the BO table. Uh, it will answer to the path to do. And here you have the permission. So if someone comes in and, and doesn't present any token because that's rest, right? So you have to present a better token. You will be anonymous, and so you will only be able to see the item for which the column of the owner ID is equal to public. And you, you can do anything on that. I could uh, just say, okay, I only want you to be able to read, but let's say I, I want to fully support public objects. Then if you are authenticated, we will allow you to see the items that are marked authenticated, kind of a semi-private semi uh, uh, thing here, but that's the important one, sample role one. Uh, so we just inherit the roles that comes from, uh, in, in this case, Azure, Azure Active Directory because uh, the authentication provider you configured uh, is Azure Active Directory. So any role that is available there can be used here. And uh, we created a sample role uh, one. And if I present my token and the token has a sample role one, then I will be uh, identified as a person with this permission. And what I will be able to do is do anything on anything as long as uh, the row on which I'm operating as the same value of my ID in the claim. So you have with the policy the ability to exactly define who will be able to see what and, and also the action that is uh, or her are able to do on that. So it's pretty uh, flexible and powerful. Now to run this, it's super easy. Once I have configured my file, which by the way, it is just a, a JSON file. So if you don't like uh, dub uh, add uh, kind of uh, operation, you can just create the configuration file with any tool you want, as long as it's uh, valid against the schema that is published here. So uh, if you want to automatically ex expose all the tables, you can easily create this file on your own. And now what you have to do is dub start. This will start locally my um, the application and now it's listening on localhost 5000 or 5001 which means that with uh, uh, insomnia arrest client or postman i can just go here let me zoom in a bit uh, and then i query so of course this is the one on azure let me just uh, use the local the local one localhost 5001 and uh, that will be uh, you know, connecting to my local database and my local database is now connecting to, to Azure and this is my table, right? And as you can see, I can only see the public item because uh, right now I am not providing uh, any, um, any, any better token, right? There is no, actually, this is disabled and probably this better token is, is expired. So if I try to do that, I will probably get an error uh, because of course now the token is expired. Um, but that's, that's to show you that everything, first of all, can work offline which is great for a development experience. If I want to deploy it, it is super easy. So first of all, everything I'm showing you is available on a GitHub repo that I created just for this sample. And here you have an Azure deploy file. I'm, I'm more confident with a shell file than ARM and BICEP. So everything here will just use AZ to deploy basically what? This thing here, uh, web app that uses a container behind the scene. So if I go to the configuration, uh, there is a uh, that API builder is also published as a container on the Microsoft public registry. 
So here I'm using a container and, and basically what the container is doing behind the scene is just uh, using uh, uh, .NET instead of WCLI to execute a data API builder engine. And that's it. That's that's basically what you need to do. Um, once you deploy it, is you will see that we are taking uh, the image from here. So that will be the, la the, the latest one. And then I can just go here. That's what I already had prepared before. So, and now I'm I'm going I'm going to the YAM web app, the the basically the same website you have here. Yep, that's the same website. Now again, I'm using Insomnia, but uh, what will happen right now is that uh, of course I st uh, still get access uh, to all my items here, right? All, all the public one. Uh, but this time I'm uh, I've been served by Azure. So in just a few minutes, you can literally uh, take any table that you have or views or store a procedure and just publish it uh, on Azure, in this case, using the API Builder and have a REST endpoint that is fully uh, working, uh, which this enables you, Paolo, to do something pretty neat, right? Yeah, definitely. So I'll take the screen sharing. Thank you, Davide. Yep. Let me know when you see my screen, please. We can. Do you? At least I can. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So this is an adaptive card extension that I've built using SharePoint framework in order to consume the API that David just showed you built with the Data API Builder. So just to give you an idea of how it works, well, I can see a list of tasks which are related to my own account. I can play with them. I can add new tasks, for example, a, a new one with PMP. Let me add it. And if I will go back to my list of tasks, I can play with it. I can set it as completed and stuff like that. So you can play with it using SharePoint Framework and creating nice adaptive card extension solutions. How uh, can we make it? Well, first of all, as David showed you, we have an application registered in Azure Active Directory in the target tenant. This is the application ID that you saw in the configuration file of the DAB uh, settings file. And here we have an expose and API setting where we have this application unique URI and we have a permission, which is the endpoint.access permission. Now, from a SharePoint framework point of view, where I created my adaptive card extension, I simply have my adaptive card extension, which in the on init method will rely on the service scope pattern to give you a clean and well architected example. Here, using the context of SharePoint framework, I simply create an instance of a custom service that I have defined in my solution. This service implements an interface, i to do service, which will do all the, or will provide all of the activities that we need to have for our to-do list. So we can list the to-do items, we can get a single item, do the add, update, and delete. So the crude queue operations. Every single to-do item will be made by an ID, a title, a completed status, and the owner ID as you saw in the uh, uh, SQL table. And then we have the actual implementation of the to-do service uh, in my solution. Here in the constructor, I simply rely on the AAD HTTP client factory object that we have in SharePoint framework so that this object, this type is provided by at Microsoft SP HTTP. And I can simply use it to create a client object to consume my unique URI, the one that you saw before in uh, the Azure Active Directory settings, okay? Now, whenever I want to consume the REST endpoint provided by Davide, I will simply need to rely on this AAD HTTP client instance object, and I will simply have to make my request, which can be a GET request, for example, to get the whole list of uh, to-do items, or it can be a post or a patch if I want to add or to update an item, but no matter what I want to do against the API, what is really important to know is that in order to have proper authentication in place, I will always need, while consuming Data API Builder exposed APIs, to use the AD HTTP client instance providing a set of options. In the options, I need to provide a custom header. Let me go into this method. In this get request headers, I will simply add a custom header, which will be called x-ms-api-role, in which I will have to specify the role that I need in order to be able to consume the API. This is precisely the role that we see in the app roles defined here in our Azure Active Directory application. As such, when I make a request from here, and let me show you with F12, I can make or actually better from here. Let me make a request now for the to-do uh, API right here in this page. 
And you will see that there will be a to-do request right here. If we scroll a little bit down, let me make much more room here. We have the, oops, most likely we have the access token right here, the bearer access token. This has been inserted in the request by the uh, SharePoint framework infrastructure. We don't need to take care of it because it is provided out of the box by the AAD HTTP handler. Uh, and here we simply have a request with an access token with the sample role that Dub is waiting for in order to grant me the permission to get access to the target to do items. So from a SharePoint framework perspective, it is really, really, really easy. You simply rely on the AAD HTTP client factory. You create an instance of the AAD HTTP client object as like as it would be I of you. It is provided by Dub, and you will simply need to add this custom uh, header to have security in place. One more and last thing you need, take a solution JSON file of your SharePoint framework solution that you need to have the permission endpoint dot access, which is the custom one we defined for our own uh, API register in Azure Active Directory. And of course, in your solution, this will be your own permission because the application in Azure AD will be registered by you with your own custom permissions and settings. That said, I think that's all. And it is a really powerful capability that you can leverage. Back to you, Hugo, and thank you. Thank you.